Ike Queen here. Got Chris's bill done. Chris Queen, that's my son. This will be a long video, but I will not be making videos uh, much anymore unless there's something that I'm really interested in. The way I operate, I'll get a, uh, a really intense interest about posting something and then you won't hear from me in six months. But if somebody asks for a video, like Bo asked for one, and I get excited because somebody wants a video, then, then I'll put one up. So if somebody asks for one, I'll put one up. Or if I get excited, I'll put one up, and then you may not hear from me for months. Uh, that's just how I am, folks. You know why? I just, I love, I mean, about FPV, I just like flying, mainly. All right. So here we go. All right, Bo was wanting to know the improvements that I made to the uh, FPV frame, the uh, Rotoriot tank. So that's what this video will be about. I'll show the improvements that I have made. There's a few that's my own, but uh, I'll give credit to uh, the other things that I do to this that I got from others. Luckily, I've got one of Rotoriot's pre-builds. This is the uh, the standard pre-build. It's not their uh, pro spec, so I can compare it along with this. And I I bought a couple of these because it was just it's cheaper to buy a pre-built than the uh, the parts. I'll probably just fly this like this just for fun. I'll tell you you all this. Uh, tank frame is the best frame that I've ever uh, stumbled across. I love, I need to turn this music down so. I love to fly FPV. I fly every single day. Usually I fly uh, during my lunch when I'm working and then uh, I, I try to rip three packs at lunch every day, I fly every day, I fly on the weekend. If I can get some time in, uh, after work I'll do it. I've got my FPV gear with me ready to fly at all times. If me and my wife are out, and if something comes up where there's a delay or we get out of church early and uh, there's a delay before going somewhere, I'll go rip a couple packs and uh, so yeah, always looking for that opportunity to fly. And that's what this frame does for me and why I like it is it's practically crash proof. Wonderful design. I've been looking for something like this for years. So now I can enjoy flying instead of always repairing. I have some other beautiful quads. I mean, they're, they're sharp, they fly good. But I can't ever feel comfortable because when they crash, most of the time they, they'll break. If I fly really hard, these don't. So that's why I like this frame. Now let me point out the differences of how you would build it if you, how it would be typically be built if you got a kit. So this, I would call this a typical build. So. And you got your stack coming out the side. Um, you've got your Rotoriot skids. Some pretty good skids if you want to slide on pavement. Like I said, I'm going to fly this like it is. I want to see how it will hold up. All right. So here's what I've done. Prop nuts. I think one of the most important things on a quad. Don't want your prop nut coming loose. And I'm always having that problem. It's the way I fly and crash. Unfortunately, these are expensive. They're close to a dollar a piece. So it's replacing these. These look the same. These are good nuts. Uh, but these are much better. Now, should they uh, put this on the quad when it's built? No, it's just going to drive the price way up. So I'd rather pay uh, a lower price for a, 
a pre-built and they have it, you know, with the, the best stuff, I put it on there myself. Oh, when I say quad, it's these motors, actually. When you buy uh, one of these motors, it's going to come with that nut. It's a good nut, but this is superior. <laughs> it. I finally had one come loose yesterday. Finally, if that'll tell you the way I crash. But the propeller was practically in nubs. <laughs> okay. These are great. They're expensive, but that's... One of my first and basic mods. Another thing I do, I absolutely love these bumpers. These uh, come with a Prospect build. Uh, this is Fly RC's bumper. Awesome design, just like this quad. I love it. These things I have smashed so hard. One of them I smashed so hard, it did, it did actually cut it. I love that design. Here's something though that I would improve. And I do improve it. This pad. I love that design. You can pull these off without even taking off the motor. Great design to the designer of this frame. He designed that too. I love it. What I do different, which I understand they wouldn't want to include it on the quad because it would make this way too expensive with the kit. Let me see if I can find one. Like I said, I don't, well, I don't know if I said I love this frame so much I bought seven of them. Uh, six are my flyers. One's for a uh, crash kit. So they're all built out. Okay, here's one. See? Uh, oh yeah, and just to make sure I wasn't printing these wrong, is it, I like to test everything. These are ordered from Roto Riot and this pad. I just want to see, if, am I doing something wrong? But no, they break. I get it. I mean, you gotta have something everybody can afford. So I'm not, I'm not dissing Roto Riot on that. Here's what I do differently. And man, do they hold up great. Carbon fiber. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. To be specific, it has to be Nylon X carbon fiber filament. What these will do, instead of cracking, they will just wear out. Let me see if I got a quad to, nearby to demonstrate that. Oh, here's a, here's a good one. To, for proof of concept... Like I said, I love to test everything. Okay, I put carbon fiber on the front, the pads that will get the most abuse because I like to come in for a landing and slide across pavement. These don't take as much abuse. They're on the rear. Look at them. <laughs> They're cracking apart. It makes me laugh. But this is a mod I love to do. I just... I just love to see how long I can make stuff last and not have to do anything to it. These will wear down. They will not break. The next thing I do, I got this idea because I used to, man, I loved uh, Mr. Steel's Apex, that original one when it first come out. I'm not too sure about the new one. I haven't tried it. But I'm over that frame now, but uh, I love the uh, idea on his. He had these nice stainless bolts. One of them has stainless on his frame and the other one's the lightweight. But I've heard those just sheer apart, the, those lightweight ones. But he had these bolts and he had these uh, rings around it. And I thought, man, does that look good. But it also serves a purpose. I think for one, it uh, it distributes the force better on this plate, which makes it stronger. And but my favorite part is let me see if I can find one here to speed up pretty good. Okay. Bible says prove all things. 
So, uh, I'm gonna apply that to FPV, okay? Uh, can, you can just see, see how that's protecting that bolt right there. The one thing that aggravates me about uh, manufacturers of quads, it's all of them. It's not one, and I know why they do it. They, uh, about, my guess would be 95% of a quad you're gonna get built, it's gonna have these. I have to drill these out if that head gets in there. Um, on one of my pre-built frames, I got, one of them was so tight, I actually did have to drill it out because I wanted to replace that. I mean, that wasn't even from flying. So you can imagine, um, you know, uh, I don't like them, they strip. And uh, I also, if this will help, I buy the highest quality tools this so this is a uh a, a mip i think they call it a mips screwdriver it's like 30 bucks for that one screwdriver but the beauty is it will not strip uh these bolts you might have seen an earlier video where i struggled getting one of these out if it would have been any other nut driver, it would have stripped the head clean out of that. I don't like these because they strip, but I know why they have to be used in quads, uh, pre-built and in the frame kits. It's because they got to keep costs down. You know, if you're going to have all the highest quality gear, hardware in a quad, instead of a uh, reasonably priced frame, it's going to be way over a hundred bucks. So again, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying what I like. These are socket head screws. They're, they're not gonna strip. I, I, I've never had one strip out on the head. Stainless steel, I've found to be uh, stronger. And the reason why I need a stronger uh, screws to begin with is I do raise the deck of the quad. If you left the deck at the uh, recommended build height, let me see if I can even find the original one. Well, it's bad when you have so many of these, you can't even find what you're looking for. So, no, that's not it. Is it? Wait a minute. Oh, it is. Okay, that's it. So, with a deck level this high, you're probably not gonna have to worry about the stack bolts getting bent. And I was made aware by uh, Chris Riley, that's the reason why these frames are slammed, what they call it, which I never could understand, but now I do. The lower the frame, the less chance of you uh, bending this stuff. I've got to use stronger screws because I like my deck raised. And let me get a new one. This one has been flown to bits. Chris, this is your build. Uh, Chris Queen, if you're watching. So. I have to have stronger screws. My stack, the screws are longer. They have to be stronger. Every screw in here I replace with uh, stainless steel, even the motors. Another thing you need to be careful of, which I did point out in another video, is uh, Fly RC also has some motor pads that he's put in there on his 3D site. If you put these motor pads in and crank down on these bolts very hard, you've done nothing, but you just smashed them so bad, you're not gonna see the benefits of what these do. Now, uh, I understand Fly RC didn't put them in there for the benefits, but in his video he says just because 
he wanted to ensure the screw length was uh, at the proper level because you can't find the, the proper screw length. They just don't make it for these for this frame and molars. This is an unusually thick frame to say the least. So, but there are benefits I've seen. It flies better with these pads. Uh, don't crank them down very hard. Again, folks, these are not my original ideas. It's just stuff I've learned from watching the experts. Let's see, what else? I put a plate over this. And my only purpose for raising the deck is I cannot keep batteries on these quads the way that I fly them. I fly them hard, folks. I use these uh, Kevlar straps. The only problem with my beloved straps is it will not fit most quads when you build them out the way they do. I mean, you're struggling just to get the stack to fit underneath the top plate. This one included. Here's a pre-built. It is totally, this will not go through there unless I rip out the wires. Let me show you. I'm gonna take the thinnest strap. This is what comes with it. It's a rotorized strap. Let me show you how much trouble I'm gonna have trying to get this through here. So I'm, I mean, I'm really, you hear that? I'm really having the pull, I'm not on the bolts. I mean, and so how many electronics am I ripping out of this? Well, I'm not, but you can see it could and rip out wires. Listen, it's grabbing. I'm pulling hard. I don't like that. I think it, it damages uh, stuff. I have had stuff damaged. I've had, uh, not with this particular, but I've had uh, stuff catch on fire in the air when I'm flying. So uh, I really think that's got something to do with it. So this will not fit with a standard build, which may not be a big deal. These are preferred straps by many. For me, they just bust. Uh, about every other time, they just break apart. You hear anything? <laughs> I mean, it slides through there like butter. That's how I like my straps to fit. I do not want... I don't want it hitting anything. And when it crashes, I do not want it shifting and ripping my electronics out of the board. So, there is a sacrifice. Like uh, Chris Riley mentioned, the taller the frame, when you crash, the greater chance of it trying to, you know, shift. And plus, you do lose the benefit of this. You see how that, this top plate would fit in there to even make it stronger against shifting. So I've lost that by doing that. There is, by one improvement for myself, I've also uh, ruined the, uh, the structure of that. It's not going to be as strong there. So that's why to compensate it, I have to use stronger bolts everywhere. So what Einstein say for every action, there's a reaction. <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind as you're, if you copy anything that I'm sharing with you, there, there could be something that you're going to lose. In this point, you're gonna weaken your structure. Okay. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, beeper. I've got to put a lost model buzzer in these. I will lose them. I do not fly. Listen to this, Chris Queen. Don't fly your quads no more without a buzzer. One of my builds for him is out in the 
at the drive-in in Winchester, Kentucky. Because he wouldn't, I gave him a buzzer, he wouldn't put it on. This buzzer goes out. Do not fly it, okay? See, Chris thought that, well, I've got my buzzer on the quad. No, because you had a battery eject. <laughs> so keep that in mind. When your battery ejects, your buzzer's gone. I always put a finder buzzer. That's where I love the design of this quad. Uh, back in here, probably can't see it, but if you look at the build video, that finder buzzer, now it's a V-Fly Mini, it fits perfectly like this frame was designed for it. It sits there. Another thing I do is, uh, so this pre-built come with it on the side, um, which I'm gonna try it this way. I think I'll probably rip that off, but just for fun, I wanna see, will it last? So I think a lot of people mount them that way. And uh, I could see why they would do that. It does line up perfect there. What I do though is I turn it around. Now that's not my idea. This frame was designed for that. Um, so not quite sure. Oh yeah, I do know why they don't do it. So Fly RC designed it for that. Why the builders put it on the side is it's too tall. You cannot put that on there. So what a Fly RC term does is he just, he spins this around. He takes this cap off. He puts a thousand microfarad cap in it, which is twice as big. He lays it down flat in that spot what, that I have from the, uh, the V-Fly buzzer. So that's what he does. So the only way they could turn it around is they would have to, uh, they'd have to raise the price of this quad and uh, solder in a uh, larger capacitor. So, oh, and they do have a Prospect build where you can just get it made that way. It's a little more money, which it should be. So what I do is I took his idea, but uh, I don't want to have to solder on another capacitor. This board comes with it soldered on. I get there, I've been getting those solder free. That saves some time. So I take their solder free board and I don't solder another capacitor. I don't lay it down flat. I leave it like it is. I raise my deck up and uh, it clears it perfectly like it was made for it. And my uh, fine finder buzzer lays on it. I also have tried, I got a build exactly like Fly RC's. Uh, I put the bigger capacitor on it and I put the capacitor how he had it on the bottom plate and I mounted my buzzer on top of the huge capacitor. It worked too, but I just didn't like it. It just didn't feel like, uh, it looked like it was uh, not designed that way, even though I did do it that way. The buzzer on top of it, I, I don't like it. I don't like stuff for me. There's nothing wrong with it. You can have stuff flopping around in here, which that one was doing. I just don't like it. I like all my stuff tied down. I've even went to the point on these buzzers I was when you put a V-Fly buzzer, it's like they almost designed it. You can run a twist tie through here. I said twist tie, nylon tie. Only problem is, let me see if I got a quad. So there's one where I did it, but I think I've got one where it's actually busted. Oh, here we go. Right there. It don't hold up for the kind of flying I do. 
I found out with the alien tape holding the buzzer in, you don't need this, but you could have it. But this other one I put in, I showed you, it's just gonna bust. This, where is it? Right here. The good thing, oh yeah, if you got six of these, see something's always getting messed up. Uh, for some reason, uh, even no matter how well built these uh, quads are, I had a electronic failure of the Express LRS, and those things I think are impossible to break. I was reading that they will not break. I think mine's bricked. But after a few hours of messing with it, I said, ah, it's not worth it. For 14 bucks, I'll just put another one in. So I don't know what's wrong with it. But this points out something else. Now I used to do this mod. I learned it from uh, Fly RC. He was doing this on his build video. By the way, look at his build video. He was putting this uh, heat shrink over the antenna to keep it from popping out. So I was trying that. But then I thought, is that really keeping it from popping out? Um, on this, it does. This is an older uh, one. It's the V1 walk snail. See, it's got two antennas. On this, it does. These antennas will come out because um, I had heat shrink on this originally, but I didn't give it anything to bite in on this other side. And it just, the heat shrink come out and the antenna, one of them did pop out of there. So that does work. I've tested it, but only on these and these antennas. These aren't stock. I went with the kind that uh, Fly RC recommended for this. For this though, I think these uh, stock antennas for uh, the walk signal too, or they're really good. I see no reason to uh, have to upgrade them on that. Maybe there's something, somebody can let me know if, if you got one that works better. So remember I said the Bible says prove all things. That's a cool mod. It's not gonna come out. This is a print I had to rig up taking somebody else's prints and fuse them together to make it fit. Uh, Roto where I had has come out with this one though. It's uh, printed by uh, Noozle. So these won't pop out of here. So there's, there's no need to put the uh, heat shrink on it from what I've seen. I think I'm running out of things to share. Um, I do use these quick connectors, which uh, it's something that they, how this came. I just love that idea. I think Rotor Riot come up with that. It's awesome. I do use these. Uh, I don't use a GoPro. I've got one. But gosh, with digital, why do I need it? Unless I, if I ever become a professional, which I won't, <laughs> maybe I'll use it. I use one, I should say, I use one like once every year just for fun. I, I use this to tie that off. I believe in always having a secondary uh, restraint. For Chris's, I haven't tied it off. Because he's actually going to use it. He's got, man, it's cool. It's a 360 camera, so it's going to film the 360. If you all don't know, you all probably do, but I mean, it films everything around the quad, so it is pretty daggone awesome. So I put a bolt in his. 
I do do my uh, battery pad different. Then, but this is a pre-build. Everybody would probably, I don't think they would just put that one piece on there. Unless you were doing the uh, toilet tank mount. Which, that's what these, is designed for that. I tried it. I thought that was such a cool idea, the toilet tank mount. Uh, for one, I can't get a big enough strap through there. But I did it anyway, and I just squeezed it. I took the top plate out and smashed it up against the flight controller. Uh, luckily, it didn't damage it. It don't do me any good to do toilet tank. The batteries just absolutely get destroyed by the way I fly it. Um, so, I did find, I think they, I think they stay on better but they get totally destroyed the way I fly. So I've got to fly it the traditional way. I use, so I put one here and one back here. These bolts are not recommended by many on the uh, top deck. These will cut your battery when you take it down into it. So that's something to be aware of. I don't let that bother me too much. It puts a couple dimples in it. I did at one time put, I would put on this the, uh, you might want to do this. I would put those there to prevent that just on this one spot. And the reason I don't now, it's just a pain in the butt because, um, you know, I'm, so I've got a screwdriver that fits everything on this quad. But then for that bolt, <laughs> he's got a smaller head, they're two, two millimeters. <laughs> so that's too inconvenient. I gotta carry two screwdrivers for that. I've gotta actually reach my hand into a tool bag. Gosh, I queen, that, yeah, that would wear you out. So, laziness, folks. Let's see what else. Going by, oh yes, this is a good one. Fly RC has got some spectacular prints for everything on this quad. Go to Thingiverse. I think he's one of the, the best who, I mean, his prints print out good. He's, he's even got the supports in these feet which I love, you just, you print it without supports, but he has uh, supports in the file, and these print out absolutely perfect. But for this, he has got some cool prints. Here's one. I'm not gonna use them anymore, but uh, I'll tell you why. But they, man, they do have a wow factor. Check this out. This is for the V2, man. I, gosh, such that is so genius. Look what it does to the antenna. It makes it a stubby. <laughs> that is just so cool. However, remember I said, Bible says prove all things. So Rotor Riot, I asked them, I said, what's this about? Oh, he's got all those prints out there. Why aren't you using it? Uh, even on their Prospect V2, they're doing them this way. And uh, he said, well, uh, we believe this dissipates heat better like that, which makes sense. And I said, well, what about, you're just sticking it on top of there with tape. I said, uh, I mean, it holds up. We haven't had no problem. It uh, it makes it easier to work on because with the design I showed you, uh, this is up underneath here. So it is tough to get to it. And I thought I'm gonna test that theory. So I tested it. Let's see. See that? They're absolutely right. I can't, I hadn't done nothing to that. I actually do think 
It might be imaginary, but I think I'm getting better range with this. I think it, it may have been getting a little too hot in that TPU. So my hat's off to the uh, Rotorite team for, yeah, it don't look as cool, but it does work. I tested it and this does not come off. Um, I do put the Alien tape on here. Now they ship it out with that regular 3M tape, which is good. You see the Alien tape, which I put on Chris's build. It's a clear tape where they had that black tape. The black tape and this stick exactly the same. Why I like this is, no, I would say I think this sticks a little better. My mistake, this alien sticks a little better. What I like, when you take the black tape off, it's not gonna stick again. This, you can pull it off, you can work on it, you can push it back on there. So, that's what I like. And if it won't stick, all you do is uh, wipe it. It's kind of like this sticky pad here. If you clean it off, it'll get it sticky back. That's what this does. So you can reuse it. So that's another mod. Again, folks, uh, don't be upset with the manufacturers of these things if they do all this. It's just gonna raise the price way up. So I'm in no way disrespecting any manufacturer. I know why. I'd rather, uh, Chris, that uh, music, that twinkle, twinkle, little star is just too much. I've gotta make that go away. You're sick, man. All right. <laughs> So, I wonder what's next. He's got some kind of playlist there. Okay, I can probably live through this one. Piano music. Now, where was I? See, all that does is mess me up, Chris. Uh, my son, Chris Queen. Bullet back in the gun. Okay, I can see why. Uh, probably make you want to use it on yourself. That's what that song was saying. Okay. Let me get back on track. Oh, let's talk about this. On the video that, um, gosh, I can't think of his name now. Fly RC. Okay. Apparently that song's called When the Truth Comes Out. Chris, the truth has come out. I can't take any more of that, so I'm gonna have to turn it down. <laughs> he, uh, in his video, he mounts this up under here. I mean, inside the quad, which I thought, man, that's a cool idea, it won't get broke. So I tried that, that didn't work for me. Uh, he said it, for what way he flies, it don't affect him, but for the way I fly, it does affect it. For me, it's un it's totally unflyable. Um, a lot of fail safes, but um, I don't fly that far out, but I do like to fly on construction sites. If, if there's nobody there, I will uh, fly it. And when it gets behind the concrete, it would drop and fail safe. And then I have to go inside, and that's embarrassing because usually somebody will uh, say, Hey, what are you doing out here? But you guys know how that is. This is how they do it now, even on their prospect build. They mount it uh, behind there, which is great. I'm not changing a thing on that. If... Uh, if you order this kit, if you don't have a, a 3D printer, uh, order these two with it. I think they're $5 each. And Noozle 3D has been kind enough to put these on their site to download. And man, are they friendly. Uh, I sent them a, a chat and said, hey, I don't see these two prints for download. 
on your uh, site because it had been announced that they were going to do that. And he said, yep, I'll have them up in uh, 15 minutes. Which one do you want? I told him. So now we can print these out on their own. Man, this video is so long. I'm starting to get bored with it. Um, <laughs> oh, one more thing, though. So, I did ask uh, Rotor Riot, uh, why are you running the stuff on top of the ES, of the flight controller? I was upset about that. I thought it was too much trouble to run it, the wires under the ESC and in between the flight controller. And they said, uh, interference, we found uh, the CSC can cause interference with your radio link and video link. Well, I said, yep, that makes sense. So I went with it. I just, I built me a, uh, you know, I built the plate to go on top to protect the uh, Express LRS wire, which now runs here instead of underneath. I don't buy it on the video cable. I still run it between the flight controller and um, the ESC, but I think I'm going to try it. Remember I said test all things. I'm going to I'm going to test it to see if my video improves running it over top of the flight controller versus between the ESC and flight controller. Whew, Ike, you done made yourself tired talking about this so much, but man, I hope uh, whoever's watching this, you'd skip through a lot of it and just found what you want. I won't be posting videos for a while. Unless somebody asks me to, that makes me excited. Um, I, I don't mean just ask me to post a video, but something you're interested in. And sometimes I just get excited about stuff like this tank brain. This is amazing. I can actually fly more instead of repair more. Uh, the tune, oh, I need to share that. The tune, um, I just got... Uh, from Fly RC's, uh, it, it's his tune, and so I use it. I've modified it to my own personal preferences, slightly. That I think, I think it flies better, but it's a preference. So I can't say you can do anything with his tune, but I do some stuff a little differently. That's just for me, and. I do want to make a mod to this. Chris Riley said I could put current limiting on this ESC to keep from burn it up. But I may do that, but I think the problem I was having, I burn up two of these, is uh, operator error. I wasn't killing my motors before the crash. Since I started doing that, I haven't burnt uh, the ESCs out. Oh, and here's what I was wanting to point out. One last thing and I'm done, I promise. You see on this build, pre-built, wires up over top hitting the flight controller. I don't like that, even though I think I've got a quad that I think I've got one where I actually copied what they did. Yep. So see, I did that too. I don't like that though. And here's what's cool. So I got, that's a pre-build. Uh, but, so there's the pre-build. I haven't done anything to it. It runs over top. Here's another one. Must have been another builder. My hat's off to you, man. This other pre-build I made in the Chris's quad. I said, wait a minute. You guys see that? Look how neat that builder did. He run up underneath. That's how I like to do my cable management. See, it's underneath and then comes in. What this builder did at Roto Riot, and I left it to how he did it, is he put a plastic nut under there. And 
I mean, it's just the little things that you learn. And I like that better. I'm going to, instead of having mine flat up against the plate, I'm going to use this nut. And it serves another purpose that's beautiful. When you pull these screws out, you don't lose them because it's got that nut on there. And being a plastic nut, you can still crank it down because it'll just kind of uh, run through the, the threads. It, it, you'll know what I mean if you ever put a, a steel nut on these. You can't get it to get in line. But nice idea, whoever did that to you. Uh, I'm, I'm using that. Better cable management. Another uh, thing I'll leave you with is... I always recommend crash kits. So, there's a, a crash kit. It's got all my screws, everything I need in a crash. I've got another kit, the, all the frame parts. Uh, Everything I need to keep this guy going. I've even got a, I've got everything. The spare V2 camera. I do use the Pro uh, camera. I highly recommend it if you do any night flying. If you go walk snail, get Pro if you want to fly at night. The HD camera will not see at night. Let me show you something here in the kit. Oh, it's not... So, I was having to make these up. Rotor Riot's now got one for sale. You can plug in from the flight controller to uh, the Walk Snail directly, the Walk Snail 2. They didn't have these till recently. And I would have to uh, make up these cables. Gosh, I can't get it to focus. And the way I had to make it up is I didn't have any of these ends to go into the T motor. So I have to buy a cable from Roto Riot. It had a six pin on this side. I'd have to take it off and put a four on it. But now these are already made up. And I bought a bunch of them. And that's what they've used on these quads. See how nice that looks? These do have a solder option. I don't like it. Um, I like stuff I can unplug because I like to test. And I have had no problems with plugs coming uh, on done. I think I've had more problems. Well, no, I won't say that. I don't think I've had. I'd say it's about the same problems with uh, wiring and solder. Plugs and solder is about the same in my experience for failures. And finally, I believe that's it. So yeah, the quad, I've got my crash kits. I've even got the ESC. This is cool if you've never seen a... I've been going with these pre-builds, so there's... It's part of my crash kit. There's the flight controller. I try to do everything plug-in so I could quickly swap a flight controller. Unfortunately, though, um, you do have to solder in your, uh, what is it, the receiver, and you've got to solder in the buzzer. So, one of these days, I'll probably be too lazy, but I used to do this. I would solder in the plugs in advance. I don't, I probably won't do it because I like it in this case. And I think this is cool. So, there is the uh, ESC completely soldered up. So, if I got to do an ESC change out in the field, 
it's plug and play. It'll just plug right in. I, I've never, I don't think I've ever ruined a flight controller on this. They just go on and on. ESC, so I do. So if you want to do a quick ESC, ESC change out, that'll be completely plug and play. Man, that's handy. So we'll put this back on. And this is a long video, but this will make up for where I'm not doing any for the next um, six months. So there we go. Got the quad, complete crash kits. You see how I build it. And uh, I thank you, Fly RC. I hope I can meet you. I'm gonna go to uh, the Rampage this next time. I haven't been to one. And I wanna personally thank you for designing such an awesome frame. Bo, man, I hope that this helped. If you're still, if you survive this almost one hour video, man, you must have really wanted to watch it. <laughs> if you don't, if you just skip through it and it helped you, uh, that's great. All right, my friends, I queen out.